All right, uh, we are back. We have uh, our calcined powder out of the furnace. We weighed it in the last video, part of the video. Um, and now what we're gonna do is get to the fun part, which is the milling or grinding step. Um, so this is gonna look a lot, uh, very familiar to uh, the milling that we did before we calcined the powder. It's very similar, uh, only the state of the powder is different now. So if you'll recall, uh, this is Wednesday A's. Uh, which is the one that I'm going to be grinding. Uh, again, you'll kind of recall the uh, appearance of it. It's kind of this big puck. <laughs> and so I'm going to take this out. Uh, it's kind of stuck to the bottom. So I'll see if I can get it out easily. There we go. Uh, most of it came out. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, staining that you might see in, in here. So most of it really came out. It was a little stuck to the bottom now. Uh, so I've got most of that powder. And if you'll see that in the mortar, uh, it's all in there. It's one big puck. Uh, so the main difference here uh, is going to be that we have cal we've just calcined this powder. Uh, it's formed this big kind of blob of, of, powder, of these powders. We form YBCO. You might have noticed the difference in the color. Uh, that's important to note from before calcination. Uh, but basically I'm going to start on the milling process with the goal of processing this powder uh, down to something that we can do in the dry press. So you've already watched the dry pressing video. Uh, so basically we're trying to get the powder in that state so we can dry press. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start this in a second and I'm going to start milling it. So basically at the beginning it's like a big rock uh, and so I'm going to have to, to break it apart. Uh, we've got a little shield here. So basically I'm going to put this on top so that all these little pieces can't fly everywhere. So I'm uh, probably going to need that. Um, and then obviously the pestle, which is going to uh, allow me to break this up. And I'm going to keep milling. Um, in this case, I'm not going to be timing myself 20 minutes like I did last time. But I am going to start the stopwatch just so you have an idea of how long it takes. Mostly because I want to want you to appreciate how much time uh, me and Antonio spent here in the lab uh, under quarantine. So, uh, so we are uh, going to do that. And then uh, once we get to a point where we think the, the powder is reasonably fine, what we're going to do is test it. So we have a series of sieves, and so we can pass this powder through those sieves. Um, and we can see if it passes through the one that we want to go to. So if you remember from your handout, um, we are trying to get to 325 mesh. And so that's a good one to look up to see what the, the size of is uh, as you're going along here in the videos, uh, because that's going to be our sort of final state. When it passes through 325 mesh, uh, that's going to be what we're aiming for. Uh, all right, so I'll go ahead and, and start this. So I'm going to start my timer, sorry, my stopwatch. Um, and then uh, I'll let Antonio get over here just so you can kind of see the, the initial uh, parts of this. Uh, but initially, it's pretty hard. Right? It's breaking up a little bit, right? But you'll have to make some impact to get this, and you can kind of start to hear that uh, change in tone here. So I'm gonna have to apply quite a bit of force to break this up. So initially, it's gonna be a lot of pounding uh, to get this into uh, smaller chunks, and then I'll be able to sort of do the same kind of uh, circular motion that I was we were doing with Billy. So I'll kind of end it there um, because I don't think you're going to be able to hear me when I'm uh, uh, going uh, through this. Uh, but uh, we'll come back and, and show you what it looks like at the end and we'll pass this through uh, our various sieves to see uh, our final product. All right, uh, we are back. Uh, we, uh, me and Antonio, have been uh, milling for the last 15 minutes or so. Um, the stopwatch is some malfunction there but you can kind of see that we've been going for about 15 to 20 minutes here uh, and the, um, the powder that you have is in a whole different state if you want to get a view of this so a couple things to again note and I know that there's gonna be some difficulty seeing this on the on the camera but uh, uh, note any changes in the appearance so color um, also obviously the the uh, sort of the nature of the powder is it small is it large you know is there big chunks uh, stuff like that um, also uh, something that's going to be very difficult for the camera to pick up and I'll just kind of explain uh, but if you have crystals uh, in your mortar and pestle so let's say you start with salt um, if you start with table salt 
um, you will see, see a lot of reflections from the, the single crystals, right? And so it will look kind of spark, what I call sparkly uh, in the mortar and pestle. So the same applies here for the YBCO. Uh, so when we started to get this down to a powder size, um, for the most part, it looks like a dark uh, gray, maybe black powder. Uh, but if you can, uh, again, you might not be able to see this in the camera, so I'll just kind of explain, but every once in a while, you'll see a little bit of a sparkle, right? And so that is a crystal, right? And if you can see it, it means it's fairly large. Uh, so typically, when you see those sparkly bits, uh, that means that you're not quite done yet. Uh, and this is kind of just, again, from experience of knowing what level I'm trying to get down to in the powder, right? So typically, if you see those sparkles, um, you still have a little bit to go. Uh, but I thought it would be a good time to stop here because this looks like probably the, the first part where we have some fraction uh, of the powder uh, that is down to size. So it doesn't all happen at once. Uh, so this is a time we'll take to see what we have. Uh, so I'm going to stop now. Uh, I think I stopped the stopwatch already. Again, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and I've got my sieves or sieves uh, over here. Um, so basically what these are, and I'm going to open up the top here and open, show you the first one. So uh, you can kind of note the, the supplier is not super important here, but there is a standard uh, for these sieves. And the most important number there is the number. So it says number, and then you should be able to read that as 80. Uh, you might be able to read the opening size, but you can also look these up. So uh, these are something that you can look up in tables. Um, so if you can kind of see the, uh, the openings here, and I'll kind of move it around a little bit, this is basically uh, like a colander or something that you'd have in the kitchen. So these are just wires that run in a cross pattern, and so they have square openings. Uh, and so that's all this is. It's just very fine openings. Uh, so if I have 80, that is one size opening. And then the next one, uh, this is the one I mentioned in the video, this is the 325. So this is the important one. Uh, once the powder can pass through this opening size, uh, this is a good condition uh, for us. Um, a lot of powders you buy from companies um, will say 325 mesh. So that means that it's gone through this uh, mesh. So that's, again, the cross action is just known as mesh. Uh, so, uh, we'll put, uh, we'll basically stack these, so I'll put the 80 on top, the 320 on bottom, again, uh, strongly recommend looking up what the sizes are, so you know uh, approximately how large your powder is. Um, so we're going to start at the bottom, where I just have a pan, a metal pan, uh, it's clean, then I'm going to have my 325 mesh, which is also clean, I'm going to put my uh, 80 on top of that, and then I have the uh, lid. So uh, just a little bit of note about this. Uh, so you can assemble quite a bit of uh, these sieves. So they make a wide range, and we have a bunch of them in the lab. Um, but I don't need to sort of have every single uh, condition there. So, But you can always make a very large stack and see what makes it through various meshes. And you can actually use this as a way to separate particle sizes. We're actually going to talk about this in MSE 403 in the coming weeks uh, through our video lectures. So you'll hear a little bit more about the sieves uh, in that case. Uh, so, But for now, uh, those are the two that we're using. We have the pan to catch anything that goes through. Uh, and then the lid, uh, we are dealing with a powder. We're going to have to end up shaking it to try to get everything through the meshes. And so we don't want any of that powder to go up in the air uh, and potentially into our lungs or anything like that. So uh, that's why we have this lid on there as well. All right, so I'm going to take off the lid to start with. Uh, I'm going to add uh, everything in my mortar. As much as I can. All right, and so you can see it's kind of uh, formed a, a mound there. I'll shake it around, uh, but mostly I don't want to do that open, right? Because I don't want it to go up in the air. Here, I have an extra layer of safety in that I'm doing this inside of a fume hood, uh, but we're going to take every precaution we can because remember the toxicity related to some of these powders. So uh, I'm going to put this lid back on. And so uh, they have shaker machines that will do this for you, um, but here I'm just going to do the shaking. But more or less, you can kind of just, uh, you can kind of tap it, you can shake it around, and basically spend a little bit of time trying to see what will go through these meshes. 
So I'll do this for a second. All right, so now I'm gonna give it a second just in case, again, there's any powder that comes out. Um, then I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna, we'll, we'll kind of take a look and see what uh, is still left. All right, so anything that hasn't gone through the 80 mesh, if you'll notice, I put 80 on top of uh, 350. So hopefully you, um, you've thought enough of me to know that this is a larger mesh opening size than the 325. So basically the smaller the number, the larger the opening is. And so basically anything that hasn't made it through this is fairly coarse. And you might even be able to sort of notice that in, in the powder. So let me get my spatula over here. So you can kind of notice these big clumps, right? So this is good. Uh, I did this, I added this uh, 80 one because now what I can do is I can just put what didn't make it through the 80 back into my mortar and concentrate on getting that to a smaller size. Right, because that's the biggest stuff right now. There's big clumps. So then, let's go ahead and take a look at what the next level looks like. All right, so you see a pretty good mound um, of powder. So this is all the powder that made it through 80, but not through 325, right? So that's a pretty good portion of our powder, right? So. Basically, through process of elimination, we can say it's lar uh, sorry smaller than the 80, larger than the 325, right? So that kind of, and, and again, if you have enough of these sieves, you can get a really good idea of uh, how much of your powder is in what size, right? So we're still gonna need to grind that, but I'll probably concentrate on the first level first. So I'll take that back, grind it for a while, and then um, see if it goes through, and then add back the stuff that was in 325. All right, so let's look at the last one then. So I'm gonna take off both of these and see what made it through. All right, so some of it made it through, not a huge portion, but enough, right? So uh, this is a finer powder, right? So this is all the powder that's made it through this condition, right? So that's ready to go. I don't have to do anything with that at this point. So what I'm gonna basically do with that powder, anything that makes it through, um, I can uh, take that out. So just to be careful, what I'll do is I'll use those big whey papers that were, uh, we've used before. Um, I'll take all the stuff from that bottom pan, put it on the whey paper, and then transfer it to a vial for storage. So this is where we're gonna use uh, in another lab session. So uh, we'll get as much as we can through this. So basically, um, I'll kind of end it here, but uh, just to kind of illustrate what we're gonna do with the remaining uh, is again, I'm gonna take the stuff that didn't make it through the 80s first and try to get those big clumps out. Um, and then I'll add that back in. And then once we get everything through, I'll take the stuff that hasn't yet made it through 325 and we'll add all that back to the mortar and pestle and we'll keep going until I've got all of it through here. And so then we'd be done for this group, right? I'm working still on Wednesday A's uh, powder. And so we will uh, be done with Wednesday A's powder. Um, Antonio is in the other hood. We're both listening to podcast and music right now. Uh, and so he's going to be working on uh, Wednesday B's powder and he'll do the same thing. So we'll try to take a few pictures along the, the, the process, but at the end, uh, we'll have a nice powder uh, that is ready to go uh, for dry pressing and centering. And so we'll show those uh, as we get to them. So stay tuned for those.